everyone, welcome to my channel. So today I'm going to be doing a new style of video and it is a luxury for less video. So I don't feel like I do that much styling on my channel and styling is what I absolutely love. So I wanted to show you guys how I feel like there's tips and tricks to get a really expensive, inexpensive, sorry, look. I feel very professional because I'm standing in front of my rail of clothes, I'm in a shirt, I need to mute my Mac because otherwise we're going to be getting email updates. First tip of the video is accessories. So accessories are a really underthought part of an outfit but they do really make or break it when it comes to looking expensive. So for this video I actually teamed up with Cluse to show you guys their exclusive Valentine's gift day set. Now if you've never heard of Cluse then you are truly living under a rock because they are an amazing watch and jewellery brand. So this is the set, it's this gorgeous little, what colour would I call that, sort of like an apricot. So in the gift pack we have the silver stainless steel watch and the matching bracelet now these can obviously be worn together or they can be worn apart but this is such a beautifully classic watch i think with jewelry less is more when you're trying to look expensive you really want to go with dainty and classy pieces that just accentuate the outfit they really give it that like luxury finish and that is why this luxe watch is so perfect this set is 99 pounds which is an absolute steal for a watch of such good quality because I was googling watches and there's watches that sell for 25 million pounds. Can you believe that? 25 million pounds for a watch. It's daylight robbery. It's even got the adorable little heart on both the watch face and the bracelet which just makes it perfect for Valentine's Day. I will link this watch down below so you guys can go and check it out. But the amazing thing with the Cluse watches is that you can change the strap. So these straps are interchangeable. So I've got the silver face but I could pair it with a pink leather strap. I could pair it with a completely different strap whatever my heart desires and you could even match your outfit with it but if I think if we're going for the classy look then stick to a plain metal be it a silver a bronze a rose gold a gold that sort of thing so yes beautiful watch thank you so much to Clues for working with me for this video and let's continue with all the goodies so my next jewelry feature is actually earrings now I am someone who always forgets to wear earrings and I feel like I should wear them a lot more often because right now, not that you guys can see, this is a very small minute detail but I think it does make a world of difference. So I've currently got really, really tiny cubic zirconia earrings in. So these are literally from TK Maxx. I think I got a pack of like eight different sizes and they were literally like 20 pounds for all of them, which is really good because when you lose one, you can use another one. And I've gone for the smallest one because I think if you're wearing a cubic zirconia diamond or I think that's, that, yeah, that's like the copy of a diamond, isn't it? And I think the smaller you go, the more expensive it looks because you're not there like, oh, hey, look at my diamond earrings, even though they're not real. You're just there like, oh, here's my little bit of shimmer, a little bit of sparkle, just to jazz up a look. And my mum was telling me that you should clean them with toothpaste because apparently that makes them shine like real diamonds. Shine bright like a diamond. Shine bright like a diamond. My next accessories and jewellery tip is bows. Now, I think these are very much on trend because of the likes of Gucci, and I just think they add so much class and sophistication to an outfit. Like, how cute does this little bow look with this shirt? It really finishes off the look. It's basically just a brooch, but in a bow. So you could put it on a jacket, you could put it on a shirt, you could put it on a bag, you could do anything with it. So I've got this beautiful baby pink one, but you could so easily DIY these. They are quite simply just a bow stuck on the back of a bit of metal with a pin. So these would be so easy to recreate. And can we see how it just really classes up an outfit? Like it gives it that va va vu. Now, next up, we have a staple to any item, especially when you want to look that little bit more sassy and classy. And that is sunglasses. So I picked up these bad boys from Topshop. Now these were 55 pounds, which I do think is a lot for sunglasses, but I wanted to get a really robust and really durable pair to show you guys. These I would say are a copy of the Celine. They're in that sort of tortoise shell 
I wouldn't say fabric pattern, that's the word, and they've got reflective lenses. And I think these are beautiful, and do I think they're necessarily worth £55? Maybe because they are going to last you a lot longer than, say, a £7 pair from Forever 21. Don't get me wrong though, Forever 21, H&M, everyone like that, they all do such great replica sunglasses. But the reason I wouldn't purchase these is because they don't fit on my damn head. Can we see this? Can we see? They, they genuinely don't fit. Like, they, they, they don't fit me. And I know you're thinking, Misha, you have a ginormous head. Yes, yes I do have a ginormous head. And I know that, it's ginormous. But even these didn't fit my sister. My sister couldn't even get these on her head. So I think because they're made with such a thick plastic, I assume, and they've kind of not been bent, like maybe if I fully bent them, I could force them, but they genuinely, that's, that's the furthest they will go. They will only sit on the edge of my nose. And with sunglasses, I would say, this is the one time the bigger the better. The more obnoxious your sunglasses, then the more obnoxious your outfit. They just create such like a va va voom. I mean, just pretend to take me seriously because pretend these are actually on my face. But the less is more does not count here. We want big bad boys that we can block out the fashion haters with. Yes, yes, because we are luxury for less. Apart from these, just don't fit my head. But we can imagine them on, oh, they don't even fit on the top of my head. So these most definitely will be going back to Topshop. But they are really beautiful sunglasses. I just wish they fit me. I will link loads of pairs down below, along with everything. I will literally link so many alternatives because some of these pieces I have hauled from the likes of Topshop and other ones I've pulled from my actual wardrobe that I think you guys will probably have in your wardrobe or you could pick them up and I will link them all down below. We'll link really similar items just to help you create this luxury look for now. A final thing I want to give a mention is headbands. Now I know this is so Blair Waldorf and it's not necessarily everyone's cup of tea, but I do think that a wee petite headband does really like jazz up a look. I think it looks really pretty and dainty. Obviously if girly isn't your style, then scrap the headband. But if it is, then this is a piece from Oasis. But they have so many adorable luxury look headbands on the market. So now we're gonna move on to tip number two, which is all about fashion. So there are lots of tips within the fashion category and that is why I have got a massive rail of goodies. So one thing I will say with fashion and looking luxury for less is that you don't need to follow the trends. I think most high fashion looks, at least for the wearable person, not necessarily the ones going out on the catwalk, but when you see those pictures all over Pinterest, they very much have a similar style. They are very smart, they are very classic, and they're not going in trends. You don't need to be picking up new pieces every single season to create a luxury look. You just need key staple items in, I would say, a neutral color palette. Now, we all know I'm a massive lover of pink, and yes, I'm a massive lover of bright colours, but I think if you're trying to create a luxury look for less, then stick to earthy tones, stick to neutral colours. Now, I know I have got a pink bow on right now. If you are going to go for pink, then go for more of a blush and more of like a baby pink and I would only add little accents of that colour. I wouldn't necessarily go for a full blown hot pink outfit because typically that won't necessarily make you look that luxury for less. Just saying. And that's hard for me to say because I am a bright colored gal, but I do feel the most classy when I am in neutral. First things at first is a turtleneck. Now, these are just the most practical invention of life, apart from when you go on a shopping trip. Don't wear a turtleneck when you're on a shopping trip because you end up getting all your makeup all over the turtleneck and you end up with no makeup on your face by the end of the day. But this is just one from Zara. Now, I do think Zara have some of the best turtlenecks on the high street. It's a really nice knit that's not too thick and not too thin, but also you don't necessarily see nipple and you stay warm, which is perfect. So a turtleneck is brilliant just to wear a pair of jeans, just to chuck on and just get that really high end look. I do think high collars create quite a luxury look. Speaking of bottoms, we are gonna move on to jeans. Now, first thing first, I'm gonna talk about black leather look jeans. Now we all know that the leather look legging is so, so on fashion right now 
and everyone's wearing it and they have been for however many years like this is one of those trends that is not going anywhere and I do think that does happen we occasionally get a new in trend that just won't go like it won't like it's gonna stay around forever and that's when I would say to invest in trends when it's been around the block it's come back around and you're like yes I definitely need to invest so these are high waist ankle grazers from Topshop. Now these are in a satin fabric, so it's really hard to tell, but these are absolutely beautiful. They are in the Jamie style. Now I got these in a size 25-30. I'm normally a 24-30 and I can't even do these up. I would recommend sizing up two sizes with these jeans because I mean, holding them here, can't you see, they look like they fit a child. Like, when they arrived, mum was like, they're never gonna fit you, Misha. And I was like, oh, maybe they're stretchy. They're not stretchy. So I do feel like maybe investing in these in a size up, just because I don't have any trousers like this, and they are such a classy look. They are the satin, which I think I actually prefer to a leather look pant, because I don't like that, I think, Pleather always has like a very plastic look to it, and that's just not my cup of tea. So I think these satin ones from Topshop are the perfect mixture. They were £42. Now, I haven't bought jeans or jeans from Topshop in so many years. So I was like, £42 for a pair of jeans? Like, that's quite expensive. But when you have them in your hand and you feel the quality, you know why. So along with black jeans, I think blue jeans are really staple to anyone's wardrobe. And I think they're underrated for how luxury they can look so I've just got two pairs from Hollister now Hollister is massively a throwback brand I feel like a lot of people just think of it when we were about seven and we used to wear all the Hollister t-shirts that said Hollister on them and all the hoodies but they've really stepped up their fashion game and their denim has always been amazing so I just have these low-rise jeans and I do think if you're trying to look luxury and you're wanting to wear denim I would go for a dark wash I think these look so put together and you will notice that these don't have any rips. Now, I'm always a ripped jeans sort of gal, but when you're trying to look luxury, I do think that rips can maybe, like, take away from that. Like, if we're being simple, we're being smart, we're being clean with our fashion, then stick with normal jeans, no rips, in a dark wash denim. But I also have the lighter pair, which I do think can look really beautiful with whites, with creams, with everything like that. So denim jeans are definitely a staple must in everyone's wardrobe and a staple must to look luxury for less. Okay, next we're gonna move on to silky garments. Now, by silky, I obviously don't mean 100% silk because silk is expensive. But the likes of polyester and the likes of the high street brands are slaying it with the silky game. So I have this shirt from Zara. Now this is what I mean about the high collars and the bows because this is not only a high collar, not only is it silky, but, oh, it's stuck to my hair, but this neck piece ties into a big obnoxious bow. Now again, this is in a very muted color palette and it's got these big floofy sleeves. Now this is almost like a balloon sleeve and I swear to you, this shirt is probably about five years old. So that just proves that even if you get something from the high street, it can still be good enough quality to last you a lifetime. And this with the black leather look trousers or just with a pair of jeans can really smarten up a look. I feel like tops are definitely where we lose that luxury feel. But if you're going for something, go silky, go smart, go smooth. It's just absolutely beautiful. Now I also have this really gorgeous little cami. Now, this is my mum's from absolutely years ago, but there are so many little silky camis around, definitely in the likes of Zara. And I think this should be such a staple to everyone's wardrobe. It's kind of like that outerwear, underwear sort of vibe, but you could pair this with any jacket, with any trousers, with any shoes, and it would just look so expensive and so classy. I'm gonna continue moving up the rail. Now, an item that I'm wearing right now I wanna talk about is shirts. Now, shirts are totally a style hit and a style must for looking luxury. This shirt is again from Zara. Zara, I think, are my favorite high street brand that slay the designer-esque game. Like, they have the best dupes for designer pieces. Now, this is quite simply just a white shirt and these are such a vital part of your wardrobe, which brings me on to a, another point. 
layering. Now this is a beautiful shirt. It could look even more beautiful if you team it with another layer. So I am sticking with the baby pink for this, but can we picture this beautiful shirt with the jumper over the top? Now I think that collar effect really just classes up an outfit and it's so cute, but it's still not too OTT with the pink. So you grab this and a pair of blue jeans and you've got a simple look that looks expensive but it's not in your face colour, like it's a dulled down version. Now back to silky items. These are quite literally some silky-esque cargo pants from Zara. Now these are again in an absolutely beautiful muted colour and I just think that this style of trouser can look so expensive. So you're not a massive jean wearer, so you don't want to be restricted by jeans or you want to wear something a little bit smarter but still a light colour. I think these are fabulous. I know Zara brings them out every single season. These are at least a couple of years old. They have them in white, they have them in every colour under the sun and I think they're just a really beautiful floaty addition. Next I'm going to move on to knitwear. So knitwear is a staple part of every wardrobe and you can either go really right with knitwear or you can go really wrong. I think knitwear can even look really expensive or really cheap. And this arrival closet piece that you would have seen recently in one of my hauls is my absolute favourite piece of knitwear. This is just so chunky and luxurious and it looks so expensive and you wouldn't even need to wear a coat, like it's so thick and so warm. Team it with a shirt, team it with a blouse, team it with anything and I think it just makes the look look very high fashion because these are incredibly high fashion and it's so inexpensive. I think it's about £60 and you can use the code HAPPY15 to get 15% off which makes it even less expensive and you can see these jumpers retailing for like £500 which is absolutely crazy. Next we're going to move on to blazers. Now blazers are a really high end idea and the high street are doing really really good alternatives so I have a few options here now this one is from misguided now I actually bought this for my mum for Christmas last year and she's never actually worn it which is crazy because it's so beautiful it would even look lovely with my outfit right now it perfectly matches and again it's in that pink tone but it's very muted it's very simple there's nothing too OTT and this is of course a very Balmain inspired blazer it has got the buttons now now, I always talk about how buttons either make or break an item for me and I think that these do look a little bit cheap, a little bit, so you could swap out the buttons but it's not got to the point where I've actually changed them yet, that will happen eventually but blazers are such a cool addition to an outfit, I think they really give it that edge to make it look ultra classy. Now these next two did cause quite a stir on my Instagram and on my videos. These two are very similar in the sort of army-esque style because there is a million and one different styles that you can have a blazer in. And these are very sort of Cheryl Cole fight for this love vibe. That's actually a good look now. Like Cheryl, you paved the way for fashion. So this one is from Bershka and I got this in the sale for I think it was like 15 pounds and it's in a navy now navy isn't typically a color I would normally wear but team it with a dark blue wash pair of jeans some nude heels a silky cream blouse and you are good as any and it was so inexpensive and then the next one is actually a piece that you guys would have seen before and this is what my mum got me for Christmas so this is a reasonably OTT blazer not many of my items have been that in your face but this one is so with this if you want to make it look classy if you're wearing one more OTT item I would suggest to dull down the rest of the outfit so stick with black let's say so this is from pretty little thing and they still have this in stock I would size up so I have this in a four and it is quite small so I would size up to a six if I was gonna buy it again but it's not to the point where it annoys me and just the details on this jacket are so high-end esque and it's so beautiful then we have another duo of blazer style pieces now these two bad boys are from Topshop and these are quite literally eight years old. Yes, I am a fashion hoarder, and that is why I will be doing a wardrobe tour soon, but I, one, need to finish sorting out all of it, and two, I need to brace you all for how much rubbish I have. But it's not rubbish, it's beautiful fashion pieces. I could have got rid of these two years ago, five years ago, seven years ago, but I didn't because I knew that they would always be on trend. I knew they were very Chanel-esque, and this tweed pattern that a lot of people on the high street are doing does look so incredibly expensive and so Chanel-esque, 
but they weren't. So they're almost like this little beautiful cropped style of jacket. This cream one is totally so Chanel, like it's so Chanel. Team that with a pair of black faux leather trousers and you're a winner. And you just look so classy and effortless. And I think this can also take a look from day to night. So it can just smarten up your outfit. Next, we have this Zara blazer. I am noticing that there is a lot of Zara pieces in this video because Zara slays. And this is just a white blazer. White is an incredibly classy colour and I do think it's probably the classiest of colours. But only if it's worn well, only if it's good quality and only if it's not see-through. See-through white leggings, see-through white tops are just not a good look. So be very careful when buying white that you wear layers underneath so we can't see any boobage. So next we're gonna go back to layering. Now this is layering with things like ponchos. Shock, this is from Zara, and it's actually 100% cashmere. And I can't recall this being very expensive. So it's just a gray kimono that you can wear off the shoulder. And I think these are such beautiful pieces. Kimonos, is this even a kimono? No, this is a cape. But this just looks so so expensive. You can just wear it to glam up an outfit. You could even pop a belt with it just a cinch in the waist and almost wear it like it was its own top. I don't think you could wear no bottoms with this one because it is quite slitty at the side. But I have seen some beautiful capes being worn as though they were a jumper dress. And as we're talking about ponchos, I thought it was only right to mention this designer dupe from Dresslink. So you guys will have seen this in my haul a little while ago. This is quite simply a Burberry style poncho. Now this is just proof that you can check out these Asian clothing brands online and find some really good designer-esque pieces. You don't have to break your budget. And I mean, if you saw someone walking down the street in this, you would genuinely assume that they were wearing Burberry because I don't think you would tell. Obviously, if you get up close, the knitwear isn't as amazing quality as it would be on a Burberry, but you literally paid like 10 or 15 or 20 pounds. Can't quite remember how much this one was, but I will link it down below. And I think ponchos are a really great alternative when it's not that hot, but it's not that cold. So you don't want to be wearing a massive coat, but you still want that warmth. Now, this is a jacket from Sheen. Now, I hauled this a little while ago, and I also saw that Freddie, my love, hauled this jacket. And this is such a beautiful piece. It looks so expensive. Now, you may notice it looks a little bit more fluffier than normal. And that is because it leads me to tip number, like probably about 207 within the fashion tip. And that is to take a beautiful, smart, fitted jacket, which is exactly what this is, and add some more faux fur. Now, people always ask where I get my faux fur from, and this is from Topshop and it's just a great piece to chuck onto a jacket or chuck onto a shirt it's just so versatile and you probably can't see on the camera but this isn't actually the perfect shade to match the faux fur on the jacket but i don't think it really matters it still looks ultra classy and i think a faux fur collar is a vital part of someone's wardrobe to make them look luxury sticking with the faux fur we have another creamy faux fur item now this is a gilet gilets are everywhere nowadays but i do think there are a lot of kind of a bit naff gilets around like the faux fur that just doesn't even look like faux fur it just looks like very plasticky this is from misguided now i got this when they had 30 percent off so this was originally 75 pounds and what i paid like 50 or something was it half no it wasn't 30 percent off it was half price i wish i'd got this in the baby pink as well because that's very misha it's just this beautiful gilet from misguided now it says vera and lucy on it and i still keep on meaning to check out who vera and lucy are because obviously misguided is just a distributor of them but this is absolutely beautiful and again, it just adds that extra texture and that extra bit of glam to an outfit. Like, these genuinely slay life. I love me a good gilet and, oh, there's so many beautiful ones out there. But there's also a lot of not so beautiful ones. So I will link down below my favourite. Yet more faux fur. Now, this is quite literally a little cape style piece from Topshop. And it's actually got a little buckle. So you guys will have seen this on Mum probably. But this is so so beautiful and this is actually from Topshop and I'm pretty sure it was like 30 pounds 
and again it's a faux fur piece that has quite a few different textures going through it which I actually think really adds. This dark grey looks so expensive and it's just proof that you can get beautiful faux fur without killing animals and without spending loads and loads of money. Okay, final fashion tips are coats. Now, a vital coat in a lot of fashionistas' wardrobes is a camel coat. Now, you guys are going to hear so much about camel coats, and I absolutely love a good camel coat, and my favourite camel coats are these two. So, this is one from Zara, and this is one from Jack Wills. I will start with the one from Jack Wills. Now, Jack Wills, again, is a rather underrated brand that I actually think have some really beautiful, really expensive looking. Yes, it is a little bit more expensive than, say, Zara, but I think this coat was about £90, which is not bad for a camel coat, and this coat is genuinely about eight years old. So me, my sister, my mum, my best friend, everyone wears this coat. UK 12 actually, and it's a cashmere blend. But come up big on me, like, this fits me perfectly and it's a UK 12. I love how with this camel coat it's very smart, it's very demure. Team of the white collar and it looks so classy and you look races ready. So I would a million percent invest in a camel coat and go for something that's a little bit more expensive just so it can last you a lifetime. Other option with camel I have got is from Zara and it is this cape. Now I love me a good cape and I think this gives a really nice spin to a camel coat. So it's just got a little fastening at the front and then it's all open it's got these big old armhole sleeves and it's just such a beautiful piece for Zara this was such a good buy I remember I got it like maybe like three Januarys ago and it was January sales but the piece that I picked up wasn't in the January sales I think this was about 60 pounds but again it's a piece that I will wear season in season out camel is always going to be on trend there will never I refuse to believe there will ever be a winter autumn spring whatever you want to wear it season that camel coats aren't a hit the final coat I have is actually my sister's now it is this piece and I'm pretty sure this is from Pretty Little Thing or ASOS. I will double check and leave the link down below. My mum actually got this for my sister for Christmas and it is an aviator style coat and it's in this gorgeous creamy colour. Now I don't think you see that many aviators in this sort of texture. It's got a really beautiful texture to it which I think makes it look so classy and it's not in a cream white. I think white aviator jackets can look very cheap but this sort of dull cream really makes it look so expensive. There's obviously some beautiful black ones but I think with the cream one you can see all the texturing, you can see all the details and it's got a Tesco receipt in here and a tissue, lovely. And I think with a black one you kind of lose those details but black ones are absolutely beautiful nonetheless and I will link some down below of course. Now that's me done with clothing but of course we've got some more accessories within fashion and first up I'm going to go to hats. Now hat is not something I actually wear that often but mostly because I live in England and if it's windy and I'm wearing a hat it just flies off but I've got this beautiful one from Zara. Now this is in camel and grey which is two of the classiest colours and can we see just how like sassy it looks I do think that we should wear more headwear because it does make an outfit look that bit more expensive and then I have this one from Topshop now I don't know where the front is oh okay I think my head's grown doesn't quite fit me but I know I kind of look like a bit of an idiot but do I look like a fashionable luxurious idiot yes so hats are definitely something to invest in. Next I'm going to move on to shoes. Now shoes again can make or break an outfit and I have got some designer dupe steals for you all. So my first tip with shoes is actually to go for a closed toe shoe. I think closed toe pointed shoes make an outfit look so classy and so designer. So I've got a few different pairs for you all. Now I've got these bad boys from Office. Now whenever I wear these I always get questions asking if these are Louboutins. Now yes they look like Louboutins from the front but they obviously don't from the back. I mean I could grab some like red paint and do it myself but I'm not quite sure I'm that 
extra like I'm extra but I'm not that bad and these are in a nude patent and they are a reasonably small heel now I'm a big heel wearer because I do pageant and I'm used to wearing big heels but these are honestly really comfy and I do think the slightly smaller heel almost kitten-esque style heel does make an outfit look really classy and expensive so these are of course closed toe they are worn to death and I absolutely love them. I would never buy a pair of Louboutins in this style because everyone just goes on about how uncomfortable they are. So save your feet and save the money and buy some office ones. There is so many styles of this shoe out there and I will link a million down below. Then also, I don't know if you guys will remember these bad boys. Now these, again, are not designers. They look like Valentinos and these are actually from Primark. So these are again in a nude shade because I do think nude heels look the classiest and they look so sassy. And these, honestly, I can't believe they're from Primark. They were literally like 15 pounds and they look exactly like the Valentino ones. At least I think they do. And no one's gonna literally be examining your feet. And if they are, then you're like, yes, my shoes are from Primark. Thank you very much. And they look like they're from Valentino. Congrats to me. But nude heels, paired up with jeans look so classy. Heels and jeans are one of my favorite looks. And I think we just need to wear it more. Like I need to go more places where I can wear jeans and heels because I just love that look. I do actually believe they still have these in Primark and they had them in a few different colors. So go to your local Primark and check them out because yeah, I saw them last time I was there. So fingers crossed you guys can find them. Now, next up, I have the massive trend of the season. This is one trend that I'm gonna jump onto, but not necessarily jump onto because I'm actually not a massive fan of it. But when I tried the shoes on, I was actually more of a fan. I'm kind of running around in circles. But the sock boot. Yes, the Balenciaga sock boots are absolutely everywhere. And they are a killer price tag. Like, they are absolutely ridiculous. And then I've seen so many people showing their sock boots breaking within like one wear. And the split down the front just completely shattering. And these ones are so similar. And they are from Topshop. Now, these were... £49, which is a massive fraction of the price, and I honestly think they look the exact same. They feel like a sort of waterproof-esque fabric, so hopefully that'll make them a little bit more durable. I'm still concerned that just like the Balenciaga ones, because they have that pointy tip, that the threads would just rip, and then you'd end up with holes in your shoes, but... Obviously, if you're gonna invest, invest in these ones. And can we see what I mean about the little petite heel? These are just so beautiful. I didn't think these sort of sock boots would be my style, but when I try them on, I actually really do enjoy the look of them. Really random little fashion tip here for you is a pair of gloves. Now, in the colder months, we wanna keep our hands warm anyway, and these pair are actually from Primark. And I think faux leather gloves look so classy, and they've even got these little white pom-poms on them. Obviously, faux leather gloves won't necessarily keep your hands the warmest out of like thick thermal ones. Now, the final sort of fashion-y piece I'm gonna talk about is handbags and handbag styling. So, handbags, there's so many of them in this world. There's so many expensive ones and there's so many inexpensive designer dupes and there are hundreds, like hundreds. I just couldn't pick one for this video. So I thought, no, because Misha, you'll end up ordering 20,000 and I will just link them all down below and you guys can see them for yourself. But I wanted to more give handbag tips. Now, I think a scarf can jazz up a handbag or an outfit or your neck or your head or anything so very much. This little scarf here is actually from a department store and as is this one. So again, this one has got a little bit of color, same with this one, but the rest of the colors are very muted. So you can literally find so many beautiful scarves. And this little black bag here is actually my sister's and it's from Reese. And I do think this looks very YSL-esque. It wasn't necessarily the cheapest of bags, it was still in the 90 range mark, but I think it looks so classy and just the addition of the little scarf adds to a look and gives it that sort of edge. Another thing that I absolutely love to add to my bag are faux fur pom-poms. Now I have got them in a lot of bright colours so ignore those ones but I still just had to show them. Oh I'm dropping them. I feel like I'm, oh, I feel like, you know, in Club Penguin, it used to have those little moshies or whatever they were called. Oh, I feel like I'm a mother of those and I'm not a very good one. So, first, woo, 
oh my gosh, why can't I hold them? So I think adding a faux fur pom-pom to a bag looks so expensive and yeah, it's just such an easy way to classy up an outfit. So I've just got this little black and white one. Then I've got a selection of incredibly brightly coloured ones, which I wouldn't necessarily suggest, but I love them anyway. And then I've just got a little brown one. And the final bag item thingy, actually Louis Vuitton. Now, I think Louis Vuitton is one of those brands that has not necessarily always been at the forefront of fashion like how people haven't necessarily been like oh my gosh i love everything in louis vuitton they've always picked out a piece but the one thing that is always going to be on trend with louis vuitton is their monogram print and i would say that if you were to buy one expensive handbag if you were to buy one designer piece i would buy a classic louis vuitton what's it called so i don't know the names of any of these things it's the never full handbag now these are such a practical shape because they're so wide but they're really spacious but they look classy they match every outfit and you can get some second hand ones for about 400 pounds from investor collective which is a lot of money for a handbag but genuinely bags like those get worn every day they get so much wear out of them and I'm not necessarily saying you need to buy a designer handbag to look luxury for less, that's the whole point of this video, I don't think you need to, but if you were going to, then I would invest in one of the Louis Vuitton Never Full handbags. But yes, that is I think pretty much everything that I wanted to mention in this luxury look for less video. On a side note, when I was looking at how much the Louis Vuitton handbags were, I came across a Louis Vuitton dog lead for £280. That's crazy, but anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope I inspired you. I hope I kind of, not taught you something, just kind of edumacated, I don't know. I'm just trying to spread what I like to think I have some fashion knowledge and my tips and tricks for looking luxury for less. If in doubt, I always think of what Sarah Days says, act confident and no one will question you. If you feel confident, if you feel luxury, you are gonna emit luxury vibes and everyone will just think you look amazing. So yes, this has just been my tips and tricks for creating that luxury look for less. I hope you guys have enjoyed. I will of course link absolutely everything I physically can find down below, so make sure to check the description box. Give this video a like, subscribe, comment down below and let me know what you think. What do we think of these more styling videos? Are they helpful or do you really not care what I have to say. Hopefully not the latter and I will see you guys all next time. Mwah.